what's up everybody welcome back to texas empire we're here with another video today we're going to be doing a review of the 2020 kawasaki mule pro fxt in my opinion the best hunting buggy on the market now i know a lot of people are into razors and stuff like that and going more heavy off-road that is not what these are made for now yes you can do that with them with a few modifications as far as lift kit winch and stuff like that this one is the basic model it only has the electric power steering it doesn't have any of the fancy lights or or color schemes or seats or anything like that it's just a base model and the only thing i've done to it so far besides service is i just had a buddy fabricate a lift kit for it um, and we got a lift kit put on there it raised it about three inches it's still got the stock tires stock rims um, i'm working on wiring up a accessory panel for it to be able to run different lights and a winch and everything off of but that's a slow and steady process but this is just a basic review in case you're looking into getting one of these for your hunting or outdoor buggy all right we're going to start here in the front um, as you can see it doesn't have the fancy little headlights in the front this is just all stock stock bumper um, it's got a little bit of lift kit on it that we just fabricated for it it's got it does have the plastic roof but this thing is the FXT, which means it changes between a three-seater and a six-seater, which when we were shopping around for these, we were gonna buy a three-seater, and then we thought, well, what are we gonna do if we have another kid and there's four of us? So we went ahead and bought the six-seater. We keep it in this most of the time for hauling feed and stands like what's in there right now. As you can see, that's what's in there right now. And then, like next week, we're going on vacation with my family, and we're going to go hit some trails up in Oklahoma. It's just some mediocre trails, nothing crazy. And we're going to need the six-seater. So it's a good thing that we did purchase this this way. But we'll start here in the console, or the cab, I guess you should say. Um, these doors, they bug me, especially this one. Um, sometimes it doesn't latch. I always seem to be able to get it to latch the first time, but... Normally, my wife, other people, they can never get it unlatched. Um, but the other thing I don't like about it is this glove box. It, it Sometimes when you're pulling on it, it, it the whole little hinge area just comes off. Um, so you got to be real delicate with it. Not much space. Again, don't need much space. Got some game camera batteries and some tools for the mule that I ordered on Amazon. We got a little cubby hole here, which this water runoff is great. Um, I like that cup holder roll cage comes up we got an oh shit handle as you could say that um, we got the two 12 volt uh, power ports um, right here is some switch holes like I said this one doesn't have all the extra modifications and everything there's our cell phones so if you buy just the base model with the electric power steering you'll get total of five cutouts for more switches that match these and you can go on Amazon I'll link some different switches down below but you can go on Amazon and just buy switches that'll pop right in here all you gotta do is cut them out it's easy you can do it with a stiff razor blade um, there's the display we'll go ahead and turn that on as you can see it's got about 50 hours on it we've had this thing for uh, exactly a year now I think um, we put it 50 hours on it we've done two services i do all that myself if you want to know how to do all the the fluid changes and everything on this mule i'll link that video up below but you got your four-wheel drive two-wheel drive logo your your park reverse neutral electric power steering maintenance required light and a free or coolant temperature light if it gets too hot seat belt light cvt axle light or transmission sorry cvt transmission check engine light all that you can change between a clock and miles or hours odometer however you want to do this there's the trip we put 285.8 miles on this thing since we bought it that's crazy um, then you got your light switch I do like that the light switch is, switch is lit up um, I do not like that the full-wheel drive switch is not lit up but when you turn it on it changes over here and says full-wheel drive so I guess you could change this switch out if you wanted to and then you got your diff lock switch which does have a little amber light in there i wish it was blue like this one but it's not a big deal you got your gear shifter reverse neutral high low adjusting steer steering wheel which is awesome for when we go from 
my big ass self to my my wife's short self so um, that's pretty awesome since the seat doesn't adjust and everything and then there's your gas pedal and your and your brake so one thing i don't like about this emergency brake is in the back it gets it gets clogged up with mud a lot so you have to go in there and adjust it a lot um, like right now i pulled the brake and i'm on a little bit of an incline and it rolled probably three feet before it engaged and i could go in there and tighten it up but then it won't release all the way because of the mud in there and everything and if you keep yours clean you won't have that issue but for me i get this thing muddy as hell every weekend nearly um, out at the deer lease at least with as much rain as we've gotten um, yeah i don't take it in any serious mud at all um, uh, i have a couple times but on, only because i had to not really for fun i don't i don't take this thing mudding at all it's been in some deep water because like i said we've had some flooding but uh, the parking brake annoys me. I feel like there would be a better design as far as not. The, I like the lever and everything. I like that it's not park gear. I like that it's a parking brake. But I feel like they could do a little bit better as far as the mechanism on the rear axle itself or on the two rear tires itself. Um, but that's pretty much it for the cockpit. There's nothing crazy on this thing. Um, we put our earmuffs around here whenever we were using them. We had this out at the deer lease yesterday. Uh, the stock tires man i've tried to get this thing stuck in some gnarly mud at our deer lease and this thing will not get stuck between the four-wheel drive the rear diff lock and and just the long wheelbase this thing will not get stuck and these rear tires are tanks i did fill it up with industrial level slime tire slime the second i got them i've always done that on any of my utvs or atvs the suspension is insane it's got a lot of suspension travel it's awesome it's like riding in a cadillac is what my dad says um the day the first time i brought it down here we took off uh down to a school and i was taking it off and up curbs you know a normal curb and you couldn't even feel it you couldn't feel the adjustment or anything so underneath the driver's seat just grab underneath and just lift up Underneath the driver's seat, you got your fuel tank. Um, I have heard of the only issue that's common with these things, kind of like a recall or service letter, not a recall, but a, a common issue is the fuel pump making a loud noise. Mine hasn't done that yet. It'll be covered under your warranty. It's got a decent capacity fuel tank for what it is, and I run the premium gas in it only. Right there is a little storage tank. I really feel like you can buy one for right here, but I, I want to say it's like 150 bucks. I don't know why they don't just send that with it. It's kind of dumb. Um, I know a lot of people take a packing tote. They can go to Lowe's and buy a tote, and there's certain dimension one dimensions of one that sets in there perfectly, just like that tote you can buy from Kawasaki. Um, but that's it for under the seat. There's your drive shaft. You got a carrier bearing, CV axle style joint there. Um, real easy to get a, get to for maintenance. As you can see right there, I've broken this skid plate in about two or three spots. That's no downfall to Kawasaki. That was uh, me getting in a situation that I had to get out of, and there were some big rocks. Um, and it was kind of difficult to get over. I know a lot of people complain about the bench seat, how it's just smooth and you slide around a lot. I guess. It doesn't really bother me. And this is another thing. My wife hates these. They don't bother me at all, but she hates them. Her shoulder eats this thing every time we're riding around and bumping around. Normally, we have a car seat in the middle front that my daughter sets in or she'll just sit in there. So this bench is taken up and she's up against this and every time we hit a bump, her shoulder smacks it. Um, I know there's you can buy pads. We're gonna get just a pull noodle probably to stick around that. And then I've got a bunch of feed and stuff in here so I'm not gonna adjust the cab. There's plenty of videos on that to make it from three seater to six seater, but it's easy. You, you pull your back door, you pop this latch, pop the latch on the other side, pop this thing up, slide it back, lock them back, lay the seat down. It's easy. Another thing a lot of people complain about and I don't understand why is that the back seat sets up so much higher than the front seat. Well, yeah, you wanna see over other people. I, I don't see how that's a downfall. Um, as far as the rear end goes, you got a fatter tire than you do on the front. And I think that's a good call by Kawasaki. Right there, you got a hitch receiver. One thing I hated about this, this thing was at the stock height, I couldn't hook nearly any trailer up to this thing because 
I didn't have rotating jacks on um, tongue jacks on my trailers. They were down all the time. Now I could shrink them up all the way, but they were still too too deep, too tall to put on the stock height ball. I couldn't get them on there. So now with this lift kit, I towed my trailer that to this thing is hauled on. It's a car hauler, but I think it's a 16 footer. Um, and I can tow that thing around now with no issues whatsoever. Um, um, the tailgate, I, I like the tailgate mechanisms. You can do it one man, it drops down, you got cup holders. I want to say it's like a 100 pound weight capacity tailgate. I don't know, I've stood on it I'm trying to load a pig up. We got some feed back here right now in a tree stand we're about to go put up. And there it goes, it's rolling. All we did was shut the tailgate and then it's rolling down this tiny incline because of the parking brake. But again, you can see the little bit of mud that I went through. If I tighten it up at all, the parking brake won't disengage when I start driving. So I just have to watch where I park and be safe and smart about it. That's probably, that is definitely my biggest complaint is the way the parking brake works on the rear end. Now I know there's, there's like I said, I could tighten it up and make it work, but then it doesn't disengage all the way every time and it, it starts burning up the, the parking brake. Um, as far as speed, a lot of people are saying the top speed's 45. I don't know why. I get this thing up to 55 with, with six people and full-grown adults in it. Um, and then it starts bogging down. Now that's on a long straightaway on the street. <laughs> and it takes a minute to get that fast. These things are not made for their takeoff speed or known for their takeoff speed. That's for sure. But this thing, it goes with just me in it on a long straightaway. It'll get up to 55 pretty quick. And then with six full-grown adults in it we got up to about 52 to 53 before it, it didn't like it no more um, and obviously i got off of it i'm not going to stay on it and, and work it too hard this ain't known for speed it's not made, made for rock crawling it's made for a workhorse now a little bit of a background on myself i worked on a white tail and exotic ranch as a teenager and we ran through machines kubota garbage yamaha garbage um can am kept up a little bit plat Polaris was best, definitely very good. I got no complaints on the Polaris, but I started in a Mule 3010, and it was a workhorse. And then we upgraded to 4010s after about a year and a half, and again, a workhorse. And then in 2015, I believe, when they come out with this body style, my boss went and got two of them. Um, and I've dreamed about having one ever since, and I finally got my own. But like I said, we, we were on side-by-sides, and machines all day every single day hauling hundreds of pounds of feed working hundreds of animals doing all kinds of crazy stuff going in all kinds of crazy terrain Kubota cannot keep up Yamaha can't even hold a candle to it um, we never messed with uh, Honda at all the Can-Ams were decent um, out of my price range I'm not paying for something that much when I know what Kawasaki can do Polaris did amazing but man the Kawasaki as far as a workhorse being able to haul feed haul dead animals haul numerous hunters to different stand locations and stuff like that i think the kawasaki is the best on the market and i'll argue that against anyone any day any brand i don't care um, if somebody walked up and said they would supply me with 20 different can-ams as long as i just drove can-am and not kawasaki i wouldn't do it um, I, i've i'm also you know i'm a mechanic so i know these things through and through they got bad of the bone engines the the biggest downfall as far as the engine goes is there's no engine brake of any type so if you're going down a hill you got to keep the engine engaged at a higher rpm so that your transmission stays working the whole time so your belt's not just slipping in there you'll burn your belt up fast and you'll know that because if you're going down a hill and you let off the gas it'll start whining your engine is technically not engaged to the transmission so you got to give it a little bit of throttle. At first, you'll go faster, and and then you're you're you'll run a higher RPM, but you'll be going at a low speed. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that helps you keep from burning your belts up going downhill. That's the only complaint as far as the engine goes. Um, changing the, the other thing I love about this thing is the maintenance. It is easy, easy. Changing the oil, the front, the rear, uh, man, it's so freaking easy. I love it. Um, I got a video I'll link that up here to show you how to do that but if we come back up here to the front we got this little hatch so if you look in here see that loom coming up there with that wire those are the that loom on the base model comes stock and there's no wires in it I ran these wires these are gonna go to my accessory panel that I'm building um, and these are the power wires but 
These machines also come with all your accessories, harnesses already for your fancy lights and everything. If you want to do that, it makes it simple, easy to do on your own. Your electric panels to back here, your relays, your fuses, control boards, all that stuff. Um, the highest point of the vehicle, I like that. And then the battery, let me get this shut. The battery is back here next to your air filter box in this little compartment. And then um, that's all the usual maintenance stuff you'll have to get to. But the changing the oil is easy. Changing the front axle oil, the rear transmission oil, all that is easy. And you can get all the stuff at O'Reilly's or AutoZone type place. You don't have to have um, the Kawasaki stuff. Um, and like I said, I got a video that tells you all the specs on the oil and what you need and how much you need and torque specs and everything like that um, that I can link right here. But these things are easy to work on. I know after I posted that maintenance video, a guy from California had just gotten a job on a ranch and he said they had seven of those machines. He is not a mechanic in any way, shape or form, but they wanted him to maintain all of those. And that video helped him learn how to do that. And he's like, man, I didn't realize how easy this was. I'd never even changed the oil in a car but now I can do it on these side-by-sides like it's nothing because it's easy. Most of them were that way though. I think the older Honda Talons are the only ones that are kind of diff not difficult, but you gotta take more stuff off to get to the engine oil drain pan, but or drain plug, but overall, this is the best machine on the market in my opinion for a hunting type buggy, which is what mine's for. It doesn't do any serious mudding and won't ever do any serious mudding because that I, I just, I'm not about that life. Um, it, it does do some serious off-roading as far as inclines and creek beds and stuff like that, but it's all hunting related. And so it, it gets off-road heavy um, and it hauls a lot of feed. Yesterday we hauled a thousand pounds of feed and equipment and then us in the cab and we, we went took, took it down some gnarly terrain and a little bit of mud, nothing crazy. Most of it had dried up, thankfully. Um, but we've hauled me and my father-in-law have hauled probably 500 pounds combined weight of dead animals in the back plus the two of us and that was on the stock ride height in some gnarly mud i'm talking bad mud where you get out and you sink to your knees because it's so thick um and and gotten out of there now like i said i only do that when i have to i don't like taking these things in deep mud i uh, just i'm not a mudder and i don't like what it does to certain components on a machine um and it's not rigged out for that to begin with. Um, we've had this for about a year. I bought it in August, I wanna say of 2020, and it's July 4th of 2021 right now. I hope y'all are having a good July 4th. That's why I'm in the fancy clothes out here in the middle of one of our deer pastures, putting some feed out for my dad. We're at my dad's house. <clears throat> Man, like I said, if you're wanting to go to Moab or something like that, this is not your buggy. If you, if you like Kawasaki, looking at the Kawasaki Terex KRX-4, think is what they're called or the Terex 4. Um, the Terex 4 is a little bit closer but for me if I'm going to Moab I'm going I'm going with the KRX if I'm going with Kawasaki. Um, if, I, if you're a farm and ranch guy or girl and you need to haul a bunch of feed this is do the job or let's say you're like me and, and you had a hunting ranch back in the day that you worked for and you needed to haul a bunch of feed in the morning and then you needed to go pick up five uh, former NFL players that you were taking all out hunting to different stand locations. You could do that with one machine, one machine. And for me, the versatility of these things, the durability of these things, and, and just the all out sheer badassery, mo badass, uh, these machines are for the price point. I paid a little over 15,000 for this thing um, But that was in 2020, you know, it's 2021 Biden has control now. So prices are gonna do nothing but go up but If <clears throat> if you're looking for something for a hunting buggy, this is it It's easy to modify. It's easy to maintain and you don't even have to modify it for for any hunting You know if you want to put a winch on the front It's not that hard to do if you want to put a dual battery kit and run all kinds of accessories, it's not that hard to do. You can do it all yourself. And I've got videos coming up soon of how to do all that stuff. But just the stock machine. I ran the stock machine. This thing was stock, 100% stock until two weeks ago. And I killed uh, well over 50 pigs this last deer season. Um, let's say five or six deer and hauled thousands of pounds of feed in it this last deer season. And 
and it was a workhorse and that was just me i was on a deer lease with a father-in-law who doesn't have a type of machine so when it, i was out there and he killed something i went and picked him and his stuff up he has a truck and he couldn't get back to one of his tan locations because of the mud i went and picked him up i took him back there i went he killed something i'd drive over there and help him get it you know so these machines stock are are mules they're mules that's why they're named mule they are the best on the market Kawasaki's not paying me anything like I said I've had every type of machine underneath me I've ran them all I've worked them all for hours and hours and and Kawasaki is the only one that that just kept up with basically my work my work ethic if you're looking into buying a side-by-side -side for a utility vehicle for a hunt and buggy for a farm and ranch use I think you should buy a Kawasaki Mule Pro FXT or the Kawasaki Mule Pro I mean what oh anywho if if you're looking for it all it all depends on what you're looking for if you're looking for something to do insane rock climbing with not the machine if you're looking for a, hunt, a mud and buggy this is the machine but definitely lift it do some different a arm stuff like that if you're looking for a workhorse number one in the game baby number one nothing else compares to this thing the only complaints i have about it like i said most of them are my wife's the door the bench seats I could see that a lot of people complain about that um, you get more contoured bench seat uh, the towing capacity is insane the top speed is is awesome for what I do with it the takeoff speeds kind of sluggish but it is what it is um, but this one for me is the best versatile utility vehicle on the market so if you have any questions about this like I said I have a video on how to maintain these things change the fluids um, I'll link that up below. But if you have any questions on these things, hit me up. I will tell. I'll talk about this machine all day long. I love this machine. It's Fourth of July, um, so I'm gonna go spend some time with my family, and you should do the same and celebrate the freedom while we still have it. Y'all stay tuned.